Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Here the mess. Even the cloudless sunsets are pretty decent. Sorry about all the shaking, but such is my driveway. Unfortunately, that's a, a mess I just gotta contend with. Broke people can't afford to have things paved. Watched a stream yesterday of the LA Auto Show and I don't really like the way a lot of the newer vehicles are constructed which I know they don't really go into any of that but um, I've seen some of the some of the things people are, are doing as far as the new construction of vehicles goes and I'm not real impressed especially with the fact that 80% of the vehicles are going to be recycled material anyway um, now as far as the electronics that they're putting in them I'm very impressed and the reason I'm very impressed is because I know it's gonna cost you an extra phone on your account or an extra um, an extra connection on your account basically like having another phone but if you can afford to do that it's gonna be um, something that allows you to use your car as wireless access point now I don't agree with putting your emails and um, text messages and stuff like that in a car even with having it read them to you I don't agree with it I think there's certain things that should be done off by themselves in their own place driving down the road is not a place that you want to read an email or a text message that could get you emotional and cause you to wreck plain and simple even the people that are on the go somebody that's that does a lot of traveling you stop you stop to get gas, you stop to use the bathroom or whatever, check your emails and text messages then. You can do that on the phone. You don't have to have your car tell you, okay, you just got a message, here's what it says. But overall, it was a, a pretty interesting little, um, pretty interesting little show. They, of course, they showed a bunch of concept cars, which... I was still more impressed with the concepts than the, the actual production model vehicles that they have out. Kia, which I never, ever thought I'd say it, but Kia's actually came out with a really decent looking um, kind of sporty car. I mean, it's still just a, a, a regular sedan, but it's pretty nice looking. I mean, it's got some nice body lines in it, and of course, Kia's got a lot of reputation to make up for because traditionally they've just been junk. And uh, Hyundai's actually recovered quite well because the vehicles that they produced back in the 80s that were junk are nothing like 
what they produce today. What they produce today is actually a pretty decent, long-lasting vehicle. Of course, any of them are long-lasting if you take care of them with the right things, but it's one of those deals where you've got to use the right kind of oils, uh, do the maintenance frequently enough, and they'll last you a good long while. Problem is nowadays, unless somebody's got like on the Cadillac's little message center that tells you, hey, it's time to change your oil, or it does a countdown for you. Um, typically, if you don't have that, then nine times out of ten, you won't think about changing the oil or having the transmission fluid filter changed. The optimum time to do all that, oil changes, and I know most of you know this by heart already, but oil changes every 3,000 to 3,500 miles. Transmission fluid and filter change every 12 to 14,000 miles. The rear end uh, gear oil needs to be changed uh, I usually do mine every time I change the transmission fluid just to make sure that it's kept up and taken care of. Sometimes that means, I mean there is a vacuum that you can use to clean all that stuff out, but sometimes that also means getting the, um, the gasket and just taking the differential cover off cleaning it out good, putting it all back together. Now, I'm gonna do mine here shortly. I got the gasket. I just need to get the time to take this, the differential plate off of this Tahoe and get it done. When I do it again, I'll video it because I've actually had at least two requests that I know of for that. The, the people that are actually finding my videos helpful and the information that I'm giving them helpful, I'm glad. Um, that was initially my whole intention of starting up a YouTube account. It wasn't just to show off or say, hey, look at me. I actually did that to um, to help people out. That was my sole intention. Coming up here now to get my Tahoe clean because it's nasty. And it's been a while since I've actually been to the car wash. Of course I don't, lately I haven't been driving much of anywhere but there's no excuse for letting it get like it is now so I'll show you before and after it's pretty nasty well, there's no sense in it but it's kind of not super muddy super bad or anything but it's kind of gritty I mean, you could see this just as easy at the house, and I could probably do it just as easy at the house, just not as fast. All caked up with mud from the yard, and all the different rain and everything. And it's just, just nasty. So, I'm gonna make it clean right now. $3.50 later. Clean wheels. Everything's so clean you can see your reflection in it.
it's friggin' cold out. It's uh, 45 degrees right now. And I'm out there washing my truck. I've been known to get out there when it's 28, 30 degrees, as long as it's not blowing cold and that, as long as the wind's not blowing in it that cold. <sighs> now the one thing that I do that a lot of people don't, and it probably makes the people that run these car washes madder than I don't know what, but I actually spray up under the fender on the lip of the fender to clean it off because that's where a lot of dirt and stuff sits that eventually will turn into rust. Our vehicles here are not undercoated at all. And of course they don't rust either because we don't have a whole lot of a whole lot of uh problems with them rusting here because we don't get much snow and they don't salt the roads much but I don't like to let it go until it's an issue like the 4x4 was I'd rather get it all cleaned off and just keep it cleaned off doesn't take but a couple seconds. Get it all cleaned off properly and then every time you go to the car wash, spend that extra few seconds. And in the end, you don't have to worry about uh, rusty spots under your fenders or on anywhere on the body. Get all up in all the different little compartments and everything. Anyway, just kind of wanted to do a little little car wash vlog. I hadn't done one of those. Well, shoot, I haven't done one of those in forever. Of course, last time I showed you what it looked like beforehand, and then I showed you what it looked like after I got it home and all the water had blown off of it and everything. Now, I do not sit out in 45 degree or colder weather and use the chamois to, to get all the water spots off of it. I'm sorry, there's just certain things I won't do. Especially when I'm fixing to go anywhere from 30 to 30 to 55 miles an hour back to the house. I'm just not gonna not gonna blow it all away on standing out there freezing as it was it got to the point where I couldn't feel my hands they were that numb cold water cold weather kind of does it basically um, just to keep stuff like what happened to the 4x4 from happening to your vehicle the optimum thing to do is when you is go to the car washing a lot more often than I have this time for sure but when you do if you'll um, spray around the inner parts of the fender wells and be careful not to get not to spray yourself in the face at all because that's high pressure water and there's a good chance it'll at the very least sting you but I have in uh, certain times in the winter actually gotten the high pressure to blow the skin right off my hand of course I didn't go to the doctor for it either oh and uh, for those of you that expressed such concern the other day about my cut I didn't do anything to it I washed it off with peroxide then my daughter came in and saw it and kept telling me I needed to go to the hospital and she washed it off with peroxide and it's fine you can hardly tell it's two days that's what it looks like it's almost healed up already which at my age that's kind of unusual but 
I'm not arguing. But anyway, just kind of wanted to touch base on that because a lot of people don't don't pay that kind of attention to detail when they're um, washing their car and they don't wash them all that often. Even if you don't give it the full detail for retail, doing the fender wells is always a good thing. Because nine times out of 10, if you're just washing it in your yard, you're not gonna have enough, um, unless you're using a pressure washer at home, you're not gonna have enough pressure to blow out all the dust, dirt, and even rocks in the fender wells to get it completely clean. So, more than likely you're gonna have to, um, you need to take it to the car wash where there is that kind of pressure and do it upright. But, I am home. Um, I do appreciate you guys watching. I'm going to try a new little feature on here. You've probably already seen it by now. But something I found, I learned a little bit of something about that I thought was pretty neat. Let me know what you think about it. kind of curious. But anyway, uh, thank you for watching. You guys have a great day, and I will talk to you later.